All right. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can see the screen share. Um, so today we're going to talk about low threshold, um, one of the sense power training zones, and um, the benefits of becoming very efficient in that zone. And as we get going here, I wanted to give you a quick background about my history and um, kind of where I came from. I've been a competitive cyclist since about 1992. Um, I founded Roll Fast in 2012 with my wife, Chris, who is the other Matt Tanner on the call. You can wave, Chris. And um, in 2015, I started working with Tom. He was still a pro cyclist racing on the world tour. And um, Cinch was kind of really training camps at the time. And um, he was sort of developing a system. And then when he quit racing, um, went full steam ahead with Cinch and have been there ever since. And in 2020, I became a coach for Cinch. So I've um, been doing that for a little over a year and um, have had some really good success with a lot of the um, athletes that I'm coaching. So first, I want to get into um, a little bit of background and talk about the power training zones in Cinch. So Cinch is a little bit unique with... Um, the way we define our zones. It's not, it's totally customized. It's something that Tom came up with and we break them off into three chunks. And the first one would be endurance zones. The second one is threshold zones. And the last one is explosive zones. And what you're going to see in each of these zones represented by the photos is basically the way that your, your body's responding. And you can see in this picture in the endurance zones where we're all smiles, everybody's riding easy. And we break the endurance zones down into one, two, three, and four, which are, are your base and your medium zones. And then in the next set, we have our threshold zones and low threshold power training zone five is what we're going to talk about primarily today. Um, there's also threshold and high threshold. And you can see in the photo, it's a little more focused, um, controlled, and, and definitely much faster and uh, more intense of an effort. And then the last set of zones are the explosive zones. That's eight through 11. And that's basically game on. Um, these are covering attacks, making attacks, um, sprinting for a finish, those kind of efforts that are, are maximum efforts. And now I just quickly want to go over um, what makes these three different clumps of zones different or unique. In the endurance zones, we're primarily burning fat as fuel. So you can pretty much ride there all day. Everybody I know has plenty of extra fat. And uh, <laughs> um, you, you can ride in that zone all day, burning fat primarily as fuel. The threshold zones are interesting because it's a combination of fat and glycogen. So there's um, a, a little bit of, of each in that zone, fat and glycogen. And your body is going to determine which one it needs to go to based on which end of the spectrum you're in in those zones. And then the last set, explosive zone, is going to be full glycogen, um, highly intensive efforts. Does that make sense to everybody? I can see a couple of faces. If you could just nod, that'd be cool. The next component that we want to talk about um, is lactate. And in the endurance zones, you're really not producing any lactate, not much lactate. It's easy for your body to clear that lactate. In the threshold zones, we're going to have lactate forming, and it, it can still be buffered, especially at low threshold, which is kind of the important thing to know about low threshold. Um, the other threshold zones, you might have uh, lactate forming, but you can, you can usually clear it. And then in the explosive zone, it's just simply too much lactate for your body to process. Um, so that means you have a uh, a limited amount of time that you're going to have available for um, your body to produce those zones. Make sense? We're getting through this real easy. Um, so the importance of the low threshold zone, kind of like I talked about, since it's a mixture of fat and glycogen, um, it'll, your body can produce these levels of lactate, but then you can also continue to clear it. So this is kind of the most um, the, the highest power you can output for a long time, up to around an hour, and still um, not go too far into the red where you can't recover. Um, this is great for um, 
like mountain bike riders or, or anybody that's doing kind of surgy work, if you can find your low threshold floor and hold it there, you can recover in that zone. And then you can go above it just slightly to accelerate or to surf terrain or to close gaps or to um, cover attacks or anything like that. So you, you're, you're enabled to go above that zone a little bit for a short amount of time and then come back down to that zone, clear all the lactate and, and recover at the, a very high level. So now we're going to look at um, a real life power analysis. And um, this was just from last week. We were in Arizona in Tucson for a team camp for Roll Fast. And um, we did a day where we went to Segura National Park and um, we did a ride with our, our club. And it wasn't um, a competitive event, but with our club, sometimes it becomes a little bit competitive. And we essentially did two laps in the park. And the first lap we all rode as a group and a couple of guys had never been there. And it's very technical at the beginning, um, actually quite dangerous if you, if you don't know about it. And um, so we did a lap relatively easy as a group. And then the second lap, we decided we would just go at our own pace. And about four or five of us went pretty, pretty hard out of the gate. And um, as you can see from, a little bit of the screenshot here, there's a, a pretty significant climb on the backside of the, um, the route. It's an eight mile loop. And, um, this climbs probably, it looks like about a six or eight minute climb. Um, so for Indiana guys, it's, it's pretty significant. There's none of that around here. Um, the power files we're going to compare today are, are my power file and Aaron's power file. And Aaron and I have the exact same training zones. So, it's kind of an equal playing field there. And our weight is pretty close at this point at right now. Um, it's probably plus or minus five pounds, maybe, maybe seven pounds. I'm not sure what Aaron's weighing today, but um, so it's, it's a really close comparison of um, fitness level weight. Weight's not a huge factor for um, this climb. It's, it's not like we're comparing a, a really heavy person and a really light person. And um, so what, what we're going to see is what happens when um, you practice these techniques and, you, and you're efficient in your low threshold zone. So I'm going to jump over to today's plan. Um, actually, I'm going to go to Strava real quick. So this is, our, um, this is our loop we did. And it runs clockwise. You can see my little avatar or whatever it is here. And Aaron's is right under mine. And for the first section of the park through here, it's all very technical. We stayed together for the most part. We were riding quite fast, um, but it was not a, a real place where you could make um, any gaps up here or anything like that with the guys we had. <clears throat> and then as we round this corner, we start to go up this climb and you can tell by the topographical that it's, it's pretty, it's pretty um, pointy right up here at the top. And in this timeline, you can see it's um, my line is the black line, and then Aaron's is the blue line. And Aaron and one of our other teammates, Josh, made an attack at the bottom of the climb. And it was just the three of us. And I watched them right away, <clears throat> and they got a pretty good gap. And you can see Aaron and, and Josh was there too, but I don't have his power file. They're pretty well ahead of me all the way to the top, and I'm closing in. And as we reach the top and go down the first little bump, I catch back on. Um, so we're going to analyze why that happened today and what kind of efforts were put in and what's the most efficient way to um, cover an attack like that. So this is the same right here is the is the hill we're talking about. And all of this um, jagged data before is all the up and down hills and technical part leading up to the climb. And so what I'm gonna do here is, um, what, what we're looking at too is um, the shaded in green is the, the terrain or the, the climb that we're gonna look at. The darker green, the bold green line is, is my power. And then the lighter green line is Aaron's power. The darker red is my heart rate. And then this line up here is Aaron's heart rate. So I'm gonna zoom in from where the action really started. So we can get a little bit closer in. 
And you can see we start out at the bottom. I'm basically going into this with the mindset of I'm going to ride this whole thing in low threshold. Um, and Aaron and I didn't discuss any strategies or any like, you know, what are you going to do on this ride kind of thing. It just, it just um, sort of naturally evolved into what happened. And <clears throat> I'm riding low threshold, which is for me, it's 350 watts, 352. Aaron's the same, same exact number. And you can see I'm pretty steady through here. And then right as we start getting up a little bit of a steep part, Josh and Aaron launched this massive attack. And if you can see the numbers to the left of my mouse, <clears throat> it's a comparison of our, our watts, our heart rate, our cadence, and our speed. And my numbers are on the left and Aaron's are on the right. So Aaron's doing 465 watts while I'm still doing 360. And he goes all the way up to, he goes all the way up to 525 here. I'm still at, I'm a little bit low. I'm at 319. So I dip just a little bit, 520, 340. So you can see this line right here, Aaron did like this massive effort well above his high threshold up into his up into his other explosive zones <clears throat> and you can also see his heart rate is is going pretty pretty high here he's at 170 i'm at 157 i'm a little bit older than aaron so naturally my heart rate might be a little bit lower but um i still know from knowing his data pretty intimately that you know when we get up here he's at 174 i know that's a pretty solid effort from aaron so what happens here is I, I see them go and I decide not to respond. I kind of let off the gas as they went by me and I started to go and I was like, no, I'm going to stick to my plan, continue with low threshold and see what happens as we get to the top. And you can see they make this big surge here and they continue it through here. They're still doing 427 watts. I've dropped a little bit. I'm at 330. Even through here, they're doing 476 watts while I'm doing 330. And what happens is, is I know that after about four minutes of that, um, the wheels are going to come off and you're going to have to pay for that effort. And sure enough, right here, we see Aaron's power drop. He's down at 275 and I'm still at around 326. He's still low. He's at 284. He does a little kick here, but then boom, like totally drops out. Uh, 175 watts. And I'm doing 319. He pushes again, and then boom, it drops again. So the moral of the story is here, he did a, a really big effort. Um, zoom in a little bit more. So he did a really big effort for... This was two minutes and 22 seconds, and he averaged 429 watts, while I averaged 339. Um, his heart rate max was 173, mine was 160. And you can just kind of tell from this standard deviation number that his power was not a steady number. It was, it was standard deviation of 50, whereas mine's 18, which Honestly, that's a little bit high for trying to hold it really steady. Um, below 10 would be a really good job, um, but this is real life. And, you know, we're responding to um, attacks and, and the wind and all of the things going along on the, on the route. So Aaron has to pay the price. And I, I must, I got to say too, Josh pays the price too, even though I don't have his power data here. Um, and I start to close in on them. And it took me this whole climb up to here to when we start going down um, that I was able to make a couple of little moves and push the gas on the, on the descent to the little flat part here and regain with those guys. Um, then the, I guess kind of the, the long story is we weren't done with the lap there. We, this was about right here that I caught those guys. And we still had another two and a half miles to finish the lap out. 
And this part of the course is a little bit more technical too. There's a lot of turns and um, ups and downs. And when I caught them, I could tell Aaron was um, a, a little bit burnt. I mean, he, he, you know, we don't really, and since we don't talk too much about burning matches, but um, essentially he burnt a really big match um, when he did this effort through here. And he was, you know, even though his heart rate starts to come down, it comes down quite, quite a bit right here. Um, you know, he's still um, trying to recover and clear all the lactate that he built up, you know, just five minutes before or three minutes before. So I kept the gas on, but didn't, didn't attack. It was kind of a, a technical and unsafe place to, to really um, go full gas and like launch an attack. Um, and so we rode together to the finish and then I think this spike right here, I think Josh threw another tack right at the very finish when it flattened out and I just kept riding and Aaron started to go and then just sat in too. So, um, the moral of the story is if you can become efficient in your low threshold zones and, um, use them when it's appropriate and, I had a bit of an advantage over air on this course because I've ridden it um, a couple dozen times at least over the years. And he's been out there a couple times, but not, not nearly as familiar with what was, what was coming or, or what the rest of the course looked like. So I knew that hill would be kind of the equalizer and um, was pretty confident that at low threshold, I would be able to um, catch those guys and um, still be in a, in a place where I could, um, put on an attack or cover another attack if I needed to down the road. Um, so yeah, so the moral of the story is if you can use that zone, it's a very, um, it's still a really high power zone. It's still a fast zone. Um, but it is a zone where you're, you're really efficient, um, at clearing the lactate that you need to put out to go over the bumps and to cover attacks. And, um, it's kind of the, the, I, I call it the, you know, the, the golden, the golden zone or the perfect zone. Um, it's where I'll end up a lot of times during um, a breakaway attempt or um, in time trials, you know, you want to hover in that zone and use the terrain to, to, to pop up over it, to build speed and then settle right back into it. Um, so, yeah, so I think, Think that's that. Anybody have any questions on on that zone or that particular day that um, the way that all unfolded? Tim, hi Matt. Tim, uh, if if he had held off and did his attack mid hill, so basically stayed with you and until about that kind of first plateau, do you think you would have kept with your strategy of the low threshold, or would you have had to gone with him? you know, for yeah, up to I, the peak. Honestly, knowing the course, I would have probably followed them if it was closer to the finish um, or closer to the top. Um, and with honestly, with the power that they put in, Josh, I know Josh is rider type pretty well just from riding with him for a number, a couple of years now. And, and he's really explosive. He's like a punchier or a sprinter. And um, his his really short power is significantly better than mine and probably better than Aaron's. And um, Josh might've been able to make that a good breakaway if he would have done that more at the top and then stayed away through the, the technical pieces at the bottom, at the, on the backside of the loop. Um, so yeah, I would not have, I would have, I would have tried to cover the attacks that was higher at the top. And if I may, a second question to the, that same section, did you hold your cadence at a specific level or did you alternate levels, but maintain the power? I did not focus on my cadence. Let me see if I can turn it on without being too, too much. It's a relatively steady climb. And I would say that, um, Yeah, I was just saying, I would guess my cadence was around 80 for most of it. And I'm guessing when it drops down here to 50, I might have been standing. 
Um, I think these little dips right here are when I was standing probably. And then here I was seated and more like 70 to 80. Um, I did try to do a couple of surfs. You can see my cadence rise up here as this kind of flattens out. So at since surfing the terrain, we basically raise our cadence, raise our power when we have an opportunity to use um, gravity or flat roads to increase our speed without um, a long effort. And um, so you'll see a couple of little jabs where my power and cadence go up. And it's if it's on a flat section or a downhill section, that's typically a surf. There's, there's a pretty good one right here. My power goes up pretty high. My cadence is, is relatively high too. Um, that was definitely a surf through there to, to close the gap on those guys. And then I think it was so steep down here, there's some coasting and a drop of power, but. Any other questions, Tim? I, I could keep you on the phone all day. Um, do you actually ride with a power meter? So when you're going up that section, you're trying to maintain your low threshold. Are you going based on feel or are you going, do you have a monitor where you're actually looking to make sure that you're in the zone, you're looking and checking it as you're in the effort? No, I definitely have a power meter. I have power meters on all of my bikes and um, going by feel would be ideal. And you can kind of get a sense for what the effort is and, and what your watts are and, and go a little bit by feel, but checking in on your, on your Garmin or Wahoo or whatever you have is, um, <clears throat> is important because sometimes it'll feel like it's harder and harder as you're getting to the top of your power is actually dropping just because you're getting, you know, it, it's, it's more fatigue, but, um, you know, I, I, I it's kind of like driving your car. You don't have to stare at the speedometer all the time. You kind of know you're going 35 or 40 miles an hour when you're going, but you still glance down and check it. And, uh, make sure you're not drifting around. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions on that? Aaron, I, I kind of sprung this on you with, without getting to review it with you in Arizona. So uh, any questions um, about this performance? Uh, no, I mean, like you said at the beginning, I didn't really come into this with any kind of intention or plan the uh the attack on the hill was kind of spontaneous and uh i think if i'd been approaching it from a true race mindset i probably would have not gone as hard as i did but that's but that's really about all i have to say um aaron looking back at the the power and going through it today does it does it seem accurate does it can you look at these graphs and see the story? Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty consistent with how I remember it going down. I was definitely cooked at the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk much at the top. Yeah, no, we did not. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to um, jump back into this. We... Um, we at Cinch, we're always looking for new athletes and um, would love to have anybody that's interested in coaching um, contact me directly or you can contact us through the Cinch website. And um, on our website, I have my top five secrets um, to becoming a badass cyclist in 2021, but now it's 2022, but they're the same secrets. So um, if you go to rollfast.us and go to the coaching tab, there's a, a five secret email chain that you can sign up for. And those just come to your inbox each day. And um, it's kind of things that have really helped me develop that I've learned from Tom and from Cinch over the years and um, have made me a faster rider for sure. Uh, here's my questions. Any other questions? about scent or about the ride or anything like that. Low threshold. No questions. All right, guys. Well, that was quick and easy. I appreciate you guys jumping on. And uh, if you have any private questions, you want to send me an email, it's matt at rollfastcycling.com. And uh, I'd be happy to chat with you guys more on email or on another call. 
Thanks, Matt. Thank you, man. Thank All you right, very guys. much. Thanks, man. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Matt.